Hello, my name is Ryan Terrell, and the question of my project today is how does Afghanistan handle the ideas of free speech and free press under the new rule of the Taliban? All right, so like I said, my name is Ryan Terrell. Um, I'm a junior here at the University of Kansas studying strategic communication. I have two minors, one in sports management, the other in business. Um, I'm from St. Louis, Missouri, born and raised, and just a little bit about why I chose international journalism. I obviously have a passion for journalism and want to pursue that in the future. And I also have a passion for traveling. And I felt that um, those two ideas just really meshed well with this one specific class. Um, my interest in the Taliban in Afghanistan has to do with kind of the tippy cup idea that we've learned in our journalism school. Um, it's very timely as it's happened in the last couple months. And maybe the impact and proximity isn't so clear because Afghanistan is not very close to the United States, but in terms of our journalism profession, it's very close in proximity to us. And obviously, um, this um, idea has a lot of conflict in it. Uh, how the research was conducted. Um, basically, I synthesized various scholarly papers, articles, websites, and videos together. Um, additionally, I used multiple databases such as Google Scholar, Advanced Google Search, and then some of our KU library databases, such as Mintel. Um, basically, a summary of the subcategories I'll be talking about today. Um, I'll start with Afghanistan's current situation, and then I'll dive into the relationship of the Taliban in Afghanistan. Um, I'll then go into how the Taliban attempted to suppress media and speech, uh, the future of, of journalism and media in Afghanistan and the greater Middle East, and then I'll wrap it up with how the rest of the world is responding to the actions of the Taliban. All right, to start with Afghanistan's political and economic situation, um, according to a status or article, Afghanistan is one of the world's most unstable countries. Uh, additionally, Afghanistan bears the highest terrorism risk worldwide, and in terms of economic situation, it is characterized as a low development country, ranking 169 out of 189 countries. In terms of the technological situation, um, actually in the past two decades, Afghan technology has become increasingly more advanced with most of the country having access to phones and the internet for the first time. However, these te technological improvements are now at risk. Following the takeover of the Taliban, it can be difficult to have a technological advancement without proper government in place. Um, just a little over overview of who the Taliban are. Uh, they were formed in 1994 and are made up of former Afghan resistance fighters who fought the invading Soviet forces in the 1980s. Um, after 1994, as they established themselves, they captured Kabul, which is the uh, capital of Afghanistan, in 1996, but were later forced out after the attacks of September 11th, um, 2001. Uh, they were forced out by U.S. troops and allied troops alike. Uh, these 9-11 attacks were planned by the leader of al-Qaeda at the time, Osama bin Laden, who then worked from inside the Taliban-controlled Afghanistan. Um, when you want to talk about Taliban in Afghanistan pre-9-11, um, the Taliban spent much of their time in the 1990s trying to suppress certain groups, uh, for example, women. Prior to the rise of the Taliban, women in Afghanistan were protected and increasingly afforded rights. As the Taliban took rule in 1996, they closed all women universities and forced nearly all women to quit. Um, according to President Bush at the time, women were imprisoned in their homes, denied access to basic health care, and also denied access to basic education during this time. Um, after they were pushed out, there was about a two-decade hiatus, and then they returned in August of 2021. Um, experts um, kind of assumed that the Taliban would return and take power once again, but very few people actually anticipated how quickly they took over and with so little resistance from the Afghan government. Uh, U.S. defense officials expected Afghanistan's capital to fall in 90 days. It took the Taliban less than 10. Some reasons for the swiftness of this takeover include intelligence failure, fa failures, a more powerful Taliban, corruption, money, cultural differences, and perhaps more willpower. Um, now we'll dive into how the Taliban attempts to suppress media, with the first one being broad regulations. In September, the Taliban Ministry of Information and Culture distributed media regulations in attempt to suppress the media. Um, these regulations released by the Taliban are so broad and vague as to prohibit virtually any critical reporting of the Taliban. Some of these regulations include, pro include media prohibited from publishing reports that are contrary to Islam, insult to national figures, and distort news content. 
Similar to these broad regula regulations, um, the Taliban released what's known as the 11 journalism rules. Um, these rules may seem reasonable at first as they include obligation to respect the truth and to ban no distortion of information, but they're actually extremely dangerous as they open the way to censorship and persecution. The broadness of these rules are open the door to censorship. There is no indication as to who actually determines what constitutes as contrary to Islamic beliefs. Um, another uh, way the Taliban attempt to suppress um, the media is through social media, actually. The Taliban who banned the internet for the first time they occupied Afghanistan have turned to social media to broadcast their message and tame the opposition. They use thousands of fake and anonymous Twitter accounts to project an image of peace and stability, which sharply contrasts the American media's perspective. They effectively use social media to control the narrative of the country while simultaneously suppressing journalists in Afghanistan. Um, some numbers to back this up, um, the Times of India surveyed over 1,500 Afghan journalists. 67% um, of those lost their jobs just over in the past couple of months since the Taliban took rule. Additionally, the other 33% of Afghan journalists are busy working under immense pressure in tough situations, and 40% of these journalists are truly worried for their safety. So as the Taliban uh, attempt to suppress media in the country, one may wonder what the media outlook in the future of Afghanistan is like. Um, according to the head of International Federation of Journalists, the future is black for the remaining 1,300 journalists that remain in Afghanistan under the Taliban rule. An official media, a Taliban media, will eventually emerge as the sole source of news for the occupants of Afghanistan. Um, it is believed that they are waiting to fully crack down on media until they can, can take full control of the entire country. Um, the media outlook in the Middle East in general, um, the, media, the Middle East is considered to be one of the most dangerous regions to cover journalists, um, while freedom of press is widely looked over and often violated. Uh, journalists in this region are subject to being arrested, attacked, banned from working, and subject to other forms of harassment. Uh, the future looks pretty gloomy for journalists, not only in Afghanistan, but the Middle East as well. Um, for those journalists who choose to remain in the, in the region, there's three pieces of advice from the European Journalism Observatory. The most important being be aware of your environment and surroundings. And then the other two having to do with social media, one being potentially use social media as a source and the other being use social media as a platform for distribution and engagement. Um, in terms of how the rest of the world is responding, people all over the world fight for free expression, speech and press every single day. For example, more than 100 people from the world's film have signed a letter calling for the British government to give artists, writers, journalists, filmmakers who remain in Afghanistan under the Taliban a safe passage out of the country. Um, additionally, the Index of Censorship Freedom of Awards, which began in 2000, aims to celebrate individuals who have an impact in fighting censorship anywhere. Winners of these awards receive benefits and support to further combat censorship around the world. Um, these two examples um, illustrate how important it is for citizens everywhere to fight for free expression and free speech. Um, in conclusion, the Taliban were formed in 1994, uh, captured Kabul in 96, and then later were kicked out um, after 9-11, but returned two, day, two decades later and retook Afghanistan. Um, they suppressed media in numerous ways, broad regulations, vague yet strict rules, and manipulation of social media. Um, the future of journalism in Afghanistan and in the Middle East alike are gloomy as the Taliban are in control and citizens around the world are not only aiding in the fight against the Taliban, but fight against censorship everywhere. Uh, thank you for listening and this is my work cited. I hope you guys have a great day.